So I only have two examples. There's only five examples in the assignment on WebAssign. And I did cover two of those examples in the videos. So you should be able to follow along with those a little bit. Um, there's one other problem that's in the um, homework set, which is cosine, right? I did sine in the video, but I didn't do cosine. And I cannot do that problem because there's nothing red in it at all, okay? which means it's not algorithmically generated for each individual student. Everyone's got the exact same problem. And if I do that problem, then I'm doing a problem for you, right? <laughs> so I want you to try to kind of use the guide from the sinex and then try to translate that over so when you do the problem on your own with cosine, okay? So just try to use that uh, example too for, for that problem that you see in website. But I did see this one in the homework, which is not one that we have covered so far, okay? So I wanted to make sure we went over a problem kind of like this. And I have another one that I selected, which was like a last problem. And it's actually super easy. It just looks weird. But when it plays out, it, it's really nice. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, I thought this was going to be a hard one. <laughs> and it was not. <laughs> I think this one's harder than, than the other one. OK, so I like to make kind of like not necessarily a table, but I like to do my original function and then all my primes going down this way. And then over here, I like to plug in my C value so I can figure out what those are gonna look like, okay? And if we don't remember, remember what the Taylor series tells us, it's going to look like F of C plus F prime of C over one factorial X minus C to the one power. Next term would be double prime, right? Over two factorial x minus e squared, and so on and so forth. And you just keep doing the derivatives until you feel like you have enough terms to figure out what the pattern is. Sometimes I only go up to the third derivative. Sometimes I go up to the fourth or the fifth derivatives. It just depends on the problem and if I can start seeing the pattern. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have to figure out what f of c is right? Because that's the first term that I'm supposed to have. So f of c, in this case, c is 4, right? So that would be 1 over 3 minus 4, which is 1 over negative 1, or just negative 1. So I already know my first term is going to be negative 1. So I'm pretty sure if the signs are not, if the signs are oscillating, like if the next one's positive, I'm probably going to have the bottom situation. Okay. Or if all of them are negative, and I don't need to worry about that. It's just all negative. Okay, let's see the first derivative. So before I do the first derivative, I'd like to rewrite this as to the power negative one. And then that way I can just use power rule and chain rule. Right? So for my first derivative, I'm going to bring down my power. Decrease the power by one, so now it's negative two, and then multiply by the table. So the derivative of three is zero, the derivative of negative x is negative one. So I do have to multiply by that negative one factor. Together, this makes positive one times three minus x to the negative two, or I can write that with the positive x one at the bottom, right? And so then now I'm going to use that to find f prime of 4. So if I plug 4 in here, I'm going to get a negative 1 squared, right, which is positive 1. And then 1 over positive 1 is just going to end up being 1. You can also use your calculator, right, whatever you do to get that value. Now let's see about our second derivative. So I always like to take this version with the exponent. Okay. I don't like to do it with the fraction because then it recalls like quotient rule and all this other crazy stuff. I'd rather just take that, use one as my constant multiplier, right? And then bring down the negative two and then decrease my power by one. So it becomes negative three. Multiply by the chain should be another negative one. So I end up getting two, positive two, 
times three minus x to the negative three x one, or two over three minus x to the positive two. So what will F double prime of four be this time? Mm -hmm. Negative two. So it's oscillating in, in uh, sign, right? First one was negative, second one is positive, the third one is negative. But, but I don't quite know what's going on with those numbers right now. It's negative one, one, and negative two. I feel like I need to see a couple more to figure out what's happening to this numerator. So these numbers here, this number would go here, that number would go in the numerator, this number would go in this numerator, but I don't really see a pattern yet as to what's happening in that numerator, okay? I know it's not one every time, right? It changed to two, but where's it going to go from there? I have no idea. So I think I feel like I need more, more derivatives and more terms. So I'm going to do the third derivative. If it helps me, great. If it doesn't, I'll do a fourth one. So I'm going to keep this constant multiplier. Then I'm going to bring down my exponent. I'm going to decrease my exponent by one and then apply that chain. So I end up getting um, positive six and then three minus x to the negative four, which can be written as six, three minus x to the positive four exponent. So now when I plug in four, what do we get? Yeah, you probably have the fourth one, right? Yeah. This one is what? Six. Six. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, does anybody know what's going on now? Can you tell? No, oh, right. Yes, it's still oscillating, that's for sure. So I would do one more just to see. And if you don't see it at this point, it's probably just because I need to explain it to you. <laughs> and I will in a second, okay? Because you really, really have to be strong at knowing what your exponents look like. Like what is two squared, two cubed, two fourth power, two fifth power, two sixth power. What is seven to the first power, to the second power, to the third power, to the fourth power, right? You need to know your powers. Not only that is you need to recognize your factorials. So what is one factorial, two factorial, three factorial, four factorial? And I'll let you know right now, these are all factorials. This is zero factorial with a negative in front, one factorial with a positive, two factorial with a negative, three factorial with a positive, and I guarantee the next one's going to be 24, and not just because you said it. <laughs> but let's see, constant multiplier, <laughs> break down our power, because four factorial is 24, so that's why I'm saying I can kind of see the um, pattern here. Oh, and I need my chain rule. almost forgot my chain rule. Mm -hmm. So that's positive, negative, negative, which is going to be positive 24, 3 minus x to the negative 5, which puts 24 over 3 minus x to the fifth. So when you plug in a 4 there, you're going to get negative 1 to the fifth power, which stays negative, right? So 24 over that negative 1 is negative 24. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead, because this is enough, and I'm going to go ahead and start writing out my function, and then that way we can try to write it in a series, because I cannot go from this scratch work to just the straight to the series, okay? I have to see what it looks like, um, and then I can do that. So f of c was this guy here, negative 1, plus f prime of c is right here, it was 1. And then x minus c is 4 to the power 1. So that's the second term. That whole thing is the second term, right? All of that is all of this. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to the second term. So f double prime, so not actually a plus, 
it'll be minus two over two factorial and then X minus my C value squared. And I have a third and a fourth, so I'm gonna continue the pattern, right? It's gonna be this value, which is positive over one factorial, two factorial, next is three factorial, X minus four to the third. Um, I'm not gonna put a plus because the next term is negative, right? Negative 24 over four factorial, X minus four to the fourth. And now we can kind of see what's happening here. And what's even more interesting is a bunch of stuff that's gonna cancel. So one factorial is equal to one. So isn't this one and this one basically going to reduce and you're just going to have that guy by himself, right? So essentially this thing is not even here. Okay. Then we move over here. Two factorial is two times one, which is two. Isn't that going to reduce with that two up there? It's just going to be a big fat one. Here. Three factorial is three times two times one, which is six. And that's gonna cancel with the six up there. So it's gonna be a one. Same thing with four. Four times three is 12, times two is 24, times one is still 24. So it just happens to be canceling all of those factorials out. So when I write my answer, I am changing signs for each term, right? Negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And it starts off negative, so I'm gonna have an n plus one exponent. Notice that's this case right here. Starts off negative, and then it starts going oscillating, right? Or alternating. And so it's gotta be n plus one exponent. So that when I plug in zero, the first guy's negative, okay? Then you're going to have x minus 4 to the power n. When n equals 0, this guy is not here, which is why you have no x minus 4 in this first term. But when n is equal to 1, then you have this guy, don't you? Okay. And when n equals 2, you have now that term. When n equals 3, you have that term, and so on and so forth. But since there's no more denominator and no more coefficient, this is it. This is all they want for this series, okay? Now in the homework, this is where you stop, okay? So in the homework, it just wants you to figure out what this series is gonna look like. Once you know that, you type it in there. I think it already has this symbol. You're just literally typing in the end term, okay? Um, but on the test, it's really hard to type all that in there. So I make you go one step further and I make you find the radius of convergence, okay? Now I'm not gonna make you do that here, but that would be the next step, which is not that difficult, it's just ratio test, okay? Um, and once you do the ratio test, you can see what the limit is gonna be. And just take as many derivatives as you need until you start to see that pattern, whatever's happening. And if you want, I can just move this up before I summarize. Right, so we start to see what it does, negative, plus, negative, plus. And the only thing that's happening is you have x to the fourth, first power, second power, third power, so on. So that's all represented by this, and the changing sign is represented by this. Okay, the next one, which I thought was going to be a crazy one, but then when I did it, it was not, is the last one in your homework. 
So yours might have a different number here, and it may or may not have a different value. But I know the e to the x part is the same. That's good. everyone is going to be the same. So again, I'm going to find f of c, which in this case is f of 1. And when you plug in 1 for x, you just get 5p, right? Now, this is why it's easy. is because what's the derivative of 5p to the x? It's just it's 5e to the x. And if, if you try to do chain rule, the derivative of x is just 1. Multiplying by 1 is not going to change anything, right? <laughs> so when you go to do f prime of c or f prime of 1, it's the same exact thing, isn't it? When you go to find the second derivative, you get the same exact expression. So of course, f double prime of 1 is going to equal 5 as well. Is that going to be the case for all of them? All the derivatives? It is, so, right? Yeah. No matter how many times I do it, it's going to be the same. So I don't even need to go beyond the second derivative this time, right? So we're going to put it in our little formula. So f of 1 goes first. Then f prime of 1 goes in the numerator. Downstairs is 1 factorial. And next of it is x minus c to the power of 1. Then f double prime, which is 5e, is time over 2 factorial, x minus c, the square. I don't even need to write the rest of them. I already know what they're going to look like. I'm going to get the same 5e, but it'll be over 3 factorial, x minus 1 cubed, and so on and so forth. Is this one alternating signs? No. So when we do our, some, our sum, nation formula, we do not need to put a negative one with an exponent because it's not negative at all, ever. Okay. But can't you factor out a 5e from everything? One plus, you don't even need to. What is my numerator going to be no matter what term I'm looking at? What is the numerator? 5e. And what is the denominator? It is n factorial, right? When n equals zero, zero factorial is defined as a one. And then when you plug in one, that's one factorial. When you plug in two, two factorial. When you plug in three, three factorial, so forth. Yes. So you have to remember zero factorial is defined as one. And depending on your book, some of the books write zero factorial here. And then some of them don't write anything because they know zero factorial is just one. Now for the x part, the x minus one to the power n, right? You have no x's here, no x minus ones here. So when n is zero, that's why you don't have one in the first term. But when n is one, you get this guy. When n is two, you get this guy. When n is three, you get this guy. This is all they wanted. Now, they didn't ask you to do this, but this is just a hypothetical question, just in case something like this was on the test, right? What is the radius of convergence? Because on a test, it will ask you to find the Taylor series, and then it will ask you to find the radius of convergence. Okay. And we know that it converges, right? Because that's literally what a Taylor series is. It's defining F as a convergent series, right? So we know the series converges. We just want to know where it converges, or what radius around that X equals 1. So in order to find the radius of convergence, we always use the ratio test. 
So we're going to do the limit as n goes to infinity of the uh, absolute value of a n plus one over a n. So I'm going to have by e over n plus one factorial and then x minus one to the n plus one times the reciprocal of the original. So n factorial on top and five e x minus one to the n of the bottom. Sorry, I got kind of cramped it there. So the five e and the five e are just going to cancel completely. The x minus one to the n power is going to cancel this n power. And then remember, this can be written as n plus one times n factorial. So the n factorial part will cancel. So what will I be left with? X minus one on the top and n plus one at the bottom. And then factor off the part that has the x because x does not have any n's in it. What is the limit of one over n plus one as n goes to infinity? It's zero. It is zero. Does it really matter what x is? Anything times zero is going to be what? It's going to be zero. Isn't that less than one for all n? Just that why that's not talk. Math notation, <laughs> that means for all. So if you see that, it means for all. Sometimes you'll see people say for all this, that means for all real numbers. And I shouldn't write in, it's for all X, right? It doesn't matter what X is, my limit is always gonna be less than one, which means that this thing converges for all x values, which implies that their radius is actually infinity. Because if it's for all x, it's all the, the real numbers, right? Um, and there's no limit on x. Notice how in your series, your series has n go from zero to infinity, right? But they never say it means n is just going to be zero or a positive number. So there's never no barrier on x. X could be anything, could be positive or negative. But it doesn't matter what it is because it will still converge. Okay, any questions about 9.10? Okay, so the next thing that we have on the agenda is the review for the test. Um, and the test is already available in Canvas, um, but you have until November 20th, but that's Sunday. Okay. So we will be moving on with content for chapter nine, for chapter 10, I'm sorry, uh, when I see you on Wednesday. However, make sure you take that test. If you wanna take that test before we start talking about chapter 10, then try to do it sometime between today and tomorrow, okay? Uh, otherwise you have until Sunday to take that test. And I'm going to show you the review right now so you can see all of what you'll be provided when you uh, when you take a test. So let me minimize this and go to here. So there's the review and then there's the test. So it is due on November 20th.
So you get theorem 9.2, which is just basically some properties of limits in case you forget anything or you're trying to find limits. Um, then what else do we get into? We talk about um, the definition of convergent and divergent series. So, um, then we have that big chart. Remember the one I've been using? So we have this big chart with all these tests. Um, and I'm not, I did the subregions already and I didn't do like all the tests. I feel like it's too convoluted when I do that. And then it's confusing when someone's trying to read it back because they're like, why is there like 10 tests on here for one problem? <laughs> um, so I don't do that. I just did whatever came to me naturally while I was doing the review. Um, and then if it didn't work, I think there's one where I tried to apply something and it didn't work. So I had to keep going and do something else. And then you have here that definition. Remember the one I was using earlier? So the first term is f of c, the second one is f of prime of c times that, and it keeps going according to this. So if you're doing the first prime, it's in one factorial at the bottom and a one power, right? If you're doing the second derivative here, then it's two factorial with a two power. Third derivative would mean a three factorial with a three power, right? But this is your formula to get every single term for that Taylor series, okay? You just have to know how to read that, right? This tells you the number of derivative you're taking, which is the same factorial you should have. It's just the same exponent you should have. Okay. And then it's really a Taylor and a Maclaurin. When is it a Maclaurin series versus a Taylor series? It says that I can't highlight, but it's that's it right there, right? When your center is zero, then it could also be called a Maclaurin series. You could say Taylor series centered at zero, or you could say McLaurin series and they know it's centered at zero. It's the same thing. Now, numbers one, two, and I think all of these actually should not have these directions right here. Um, I think the only thing that it should say is the second sentence for problems one, two, and three. So I did fix that on the test, but I think someone had already come in and done the review, and so I can't edit it. Once someone's already gone in there and clicked on it, even if they didn't even answer questions, the fact that they opened it, I can't go in there and edit it anymore. Um, <laughs> so it's locked. But for one through three, when you're taking a test, it will not say state the test that you applied because those three problems, you're not applying a particular test. Okay. Um, and if you are, it tells you with exactly which test to use. So for those, I think it's the first four. We do not use um, you do not use a test. So just make sure you're using proper notation in your steps, and then make sure that your answer matches what you put in the paperwork. Um. So for number one, I don't know what y'all want me to do. We have an hour and like fifty minutes. <laughs> So see, this is the one I told you about. So it asks you to find the Taylor series or McLaurin series, or it says uh, use the definition of the Taylor series to find the McLaurin series because C equals zero. So notice how it doesn't give you a C down here because they gave it to you up there. Um, and then it says then find the radius of convergence, okay? So on your paper, make sure that you're giving me that series right what it looks like after you summarize everything right in factorial whatever it is the alternating signs whatever's happening but once you get that series then apply the root, uh, root test you can find the radius of convergence okay um 14 and 13 are both power series already so you're just doing ratio tests to find the radius of convergence okay so it's really three problems for you to get to practice your ratio test this one, the exponent is 3n, right? Trying to make it a little bit bigger. But the exponent is 3n. And so what test would you use here to figure out? 
That's true. Not him term. Almost. It's the root test because the root will get rid of this little in one. Okay. We did one very similar to this in class. Do you want me to go backwards or forwards? Because if I do it, because remember, you have to do this review, right? I don't want to give you all the answers because you're just going to um, write them in there and then I'll do the problems. So <laughs> I don't know what I want you to do. Um, is there anyone in here that you specifically want to see? I have one from my four. Sure. On my point nine, number four. What does it look like? Um, it's a series, a power series. And equal to, I want to see if it's like any of these right now. That's not bad. Equal to three over two x minus one c equals seven. F of x equal to what? Three over two x minus one. Oh, center is equal. Oh, I know which one these are. Um, I don't know what I think. We got lucky because none of these are on the review, which means it's most likely not on the test. Um, there you go. But this was the one where we had to manipulate them. So yeah. the first thing that you want to do is rearrange this because the goal is to get uh, one minus or no, A over one minus R. And the R is where you want to have the X minus C. So you really want to have it something like X minus like that. So we have some manipulating to do here. The first thing that we need to do is um, I would divide everybody by two because if you notice, there's no two in front of this X, right? Moreover, I would actually divide by negative two because don't I need a negative in front of X? So if I do three divided by negative two, two X divided by negative two and minus one divided by negative two. I get negative three halves over negative X plus one half, which can be written as one half minus X. And then if I need X minus C, I can write X minus, what is C? C is two. But if I minus two, I also have to add two so that I don't change the actual problem, right? But then I'm gonna kick that one out of the parentheses. So it'll be um, X minus two and then the negative and a positive will make it minus two. And then I can combine these like terms. So that would actually give me negative three halves. And then because this is supposed to be a one, it has to be a one. I have to divide everybody by three, negative three halves. That's gonna make this term interesting. So I'm gonna have positive one, positive one, minus, and it has to be a minus. So that means this is gonna be two, negative two thirds. Which means my A is one and my R is negative two thirds X minus two. And so if I have to write this in a series, it's going to be with the coefficient of one and then negative two thirds. X minus two to the power of eight. The divide symbol hmm? is that the divide symbol between this one here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay.
This can also be written differently, but I'm not saying we have to do this. But it could also be written like Right, the negative has the end power, the two thirds has the end power, and the x minus two has the end power. Every single factor. What the sign should take this so It should. If not, you want to like that. <laughs> Okay, I will mention, okay, I'm going to talk about number, I'm going to kind of briefly go through all, but very, very briefly, and I'm going to turn the record off because I don't want you to just write the answers when you see them over here. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to turn the record off, but I'm going to explain what's going on in this video. So stop the recording.